Hey everybody, I am out here working on a an old suburban furnace. Uh, not that old, it's uh, about a 2000 model, so 15, 18 years old. And one of the things about these furnaces that will fail is a very common item and it's right here. Now, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Here is the item and it is the run heat fan control relay. And what they do is they have a little bimetal strip inside of them that'll heat up when, when power is applied. And when it's applied to it, it'll then cause it to expand against the contact points and send power through to the blower. When the blower activates, you have a switch back here, and this is an NT34. You have a switch back here, it's called a leaf switch. One of the things that will go wrong on a lot of these leaf switches is they'll just get dirty. You can blow them out with air and that helps a lot. Now, I went ahead and pulled this one completely apart because inside of this is literally just flies, wasp, you name it, everything. And they get inside this tube here. Let me see if I can show you down in there. This is the air chamber for the air that blows in for the flame. That is how the, uh, the flame gets its air. And of course, there's the exhaust. So it has an exhaust and it has an air intake. And you can see down in there. And the air intake will usually get uh, wasp in it and everything else. Now, these little gaskets that are on here, you can take nothing but a standard, what's called uh, muffler um, or exhaust grade RTV, exhaust grade, and just put a thin film on here and replace it. You don't have to buy the expensive $15 gasket. In this one's case, it still survives. And this, this here is just a row of screws. You'll just take it off and your gas pipe supply is right here and you'll just work that cover off. Uh, this is for Suburbans and a lot of Atwoods and the cover is just this and it just, you see that, it just slides up and out. The screws will be on there, the little wire clip for wires, things like that. But you'll pull that out. Now this is the, one of the most common furnaces in an RV. A lot of people choose to use these for tiny homes because their efficiency is much higher than uh, an actual uh, furnace for a house. And their efficiency level is up there in the 84%. And most houses are barely lucky enough to be about 70%. Um, even when they tell you it's more, it's not. Now, what I've done here is I've taken standard three-in-one oil and I've dripped it down right in here to where it'll soak into the bearing and then I'm gonna work with the bearing the sleeve back and forth because these are just sleeve bearings in here. And I am getting it to where the bearing is getting new oil. Now this being an 18 year old furnace, that's a good idea. Now I've taken this blower off also and there is just a set screw right in there. You can see it right there. And that set screw comes out with a 3 seconds Allen wrench on most all of them. Do not take the screws loose anywhere else so that the, this will come out in two sections. What you'll want to do is clean this really well with a wire brush and then drop oil around it and let it sit for about 10 minutes and then take it out and you'll walk it out of there and it'll come off fairly easy. Just make sure you align that correctly and do not try to over torque your set screw. If it looks like it ain't gonna come off, oil it some more, maybe warm it up with a hair dryer or something cause it to expand out a little bit. The thing is, is that we've replaced, this is a, a furnace that would kick on, and it can give you the diagnosis here. This is a furnace that would kick on, it would run for a few seconds and then fire back off. Or it would kick on, cycle flame and shut off immediately. And what happens is these lose their continuity and they quit working. Now this one's a dinosaur right here. This is the original factory Suburban Atwood, or even Coleman's have these. And then here is another option, and I'm going to put a link below the video for this option, as well as this option. This is about 30 bucks. This is about 25, 30 bucks. Now this one's 24 volt, but don't worry. Um, it's delay only changes, instead of it being uh, 13 seconds, it's about 11. So you have 11 seconds of fan. The fan will fire up, exhaust the system, blow out any gases that might still be in there because you don't want a hot ignition. So if you, if you have a glowing heat chamber and gas goes in, that's bad. This will kick on, 
and these are real simple to remove. You do have to pull this from the container. So here is, here is the furnace housing right here. And typically you've got just a screw or two up here in the front, pull it around. You'll just have a screw or two up here in the front that goes into that casing. So in this one's case, you can see the holes there. This one's backwards, upside down. And you'll be able to just physically slide this right out the front. You don't actually have to remove these from the RV. You don't have to remove this case, but it's, it's a lot easier. And the, the easy part is, is that the exhaust and all that will just slip off. It's a slip fit. If it doesn't want to slide off, then you've got some cleaning to do for your outside exhaust. And for where this would go on the outside of it, you have some cleaning to do because that should come off fairly easy. Now, In this one's case here, we're just going to put it back in, slide it in and align the pipes inside the original case that's in the RV, the guy's RV. But this one has a new run, fan blower run relay, and his would just not kick on and act properly. So here's the item right here, it's Dinosaur. The link down below the video is gonna get you where you're going with it. And if your furnace is not functioning correctly and the blower doesn't wanna kick on, if the, look, remember, if the blower don't kick on, you will not get flame because that switch and I don't like to repeat it, but that switch right here will send the power back to the board that will ignite your spark and also make sure the valves to the gas is open. So without that little item working right, nothing on your furnace will work right. In the case of your board, if you're wondering whether your igniter is working, this little neon bulb right over here, You'll be able to get a mirror, reach up inside the cavity where it's at, look in the side of the grill here, and you should see that flicker a little bit. And that tells you, yes, your igniter's still working, but other things are failing. The boards on these don't fail a lot. This one over here, uh, this is another heater. Its board has failed, but it's a capacitor that's failed. So it doesn't get its initial charge for its igniter. And I'm just going to replace the capacitor. I'm not paying $100 for a board over a 50 cent capacitor. Typical thing I do uh, during the winter time is repair furnaces, probably 10 a week. So this is an easy one. The NT20s all the way up through the 44s or 46s, whatever the models they got now, they're basically the same. A lot of Atwoods too, even the ones that are flat, they still have the same type of run relays that go in them, fan blower run relays. I'll send y'all that link. Y'all look down below the video and if you got questions, ask. If I can answer them, I will. All right, guys.